So who the fuck is Jake Paul fighting? I mean, nobody knows. Let me tell you who it is. But first, let's start with the obvious. Tommy Fury pulled out of his fight with Jake Paul. This was, I think, the second time it was scheduled. It was the third time that it was really being talked about and the talks were heavy that these two were going to get in the squared circle. But like the weird bloke that Tommy Fury is, half-brother of Tyson Fury, Love Island star, and let's be honest, no one even knows what Love Island is. We know it's a reality show, but no one ever watches it. The poor lad never learned how to swim, I. So yeah, he pulled out and, you know, it was a, it was a weird situation. And it was weird by two things. One, Tyson Fury and his dad, T- Tommy Fury's dad, I don't, I don't know his name. They were doing all the trash talking for their brother slash son. They were doing all the trash talk for him, even when they were supposed to fight back in December of last year. And it was weird that almost Tommy couldn't fight his own battles. And I just remember thinking, this isn't the right guy to beat Jake Paul. And at the end of the day, this is why Jake Paul is doing it. He wants to earn the respect of the boxing masses. He wants to earn the respect of us. He wants to earn the respect of people that cover the sport of boxing by knocking out a real boxer. Tommy Fury, Fury, yeah, he has the name. He has the celebrity status. It is a high-end celebrity boxing match, but he wasn't the right guy. He, it just wasn't the right guy. It wasn't the right dude. It wasn't the type of guy that you need to be a Jake Paul. His record was good, was light, but the guys that Tommy Fury has fought had records of, you ready for this? 10 and 26, 12 and 252. I'm not making that up. I am not making that up. Go look for yourself. Go Google that. That is a fact. He beat another guy that was, I think, two and six. The most legitimate win he has was against a boxer whose record was 2-1. and one. Now, I know Jake is fighting celebrities of bigger status, and they don't have the perfect records. But still, compared to a guy whose family is boxing royalty who will disown you if you're not a boxer, it is quite embarrassing. So it was a perfect fight for Jake. But me, along with a lot of other people, knew that Tommy wasn't going to beat him. He didn't have what it takes to beat Jake. He talked a big game. He made us all convinced. But with him pulling out constantly, I think we understood that, you know, this just isn't the right matchup for Tommy. And Jake was going to win. Jake was going to beat him. And I that pains me to say it, but I truly think Jake would have knocked Tommy Fury out. So the weird situation on why Tommy can't compete on August 6th is because of a whole visa issue getting into the country issue, things like that, to where if you just go to the embassy in England, you could basically get your green card to come over to the U.S. Tommy didn't do that. I don't know why. I don't know how. But everyone took that as a sign of weakness and knew that he just doesn't want to fight. He don't even want to collect a paycheck, as Jake is promising this fight to be the biggest paycheck Tommy has ever received. He don't even want the paycheck that comes with it. He don't want to pull a Ben Askren and just show up for the money and get knocked out in the first round. He wants to win, but I think it's also a situation where he knows he cannot win. So it's pretty interesting when you think of it. And I just was like, wow, he's really embarrassing himself doing this. He's embarrassing Tyson Fury and he's embarrassing his name. He's embarrassing the legacy of the family. But at the end, I'm glad the fight got canceled. It was a a good hype move by Jake, a good marketing stunt by Jake. He announced that his fight would be in August. He announced that back in like April. And no one knew who it was going to be against. But the early talks figured it was going to be against Tommy. Not no NFL player, not no other YouTuber. Tommy Fury, a real boxer like Jake has wanted. But again, I'm super happy that this fight is not happening because it is just not going to be a good fight for Tommy. But now, stepping in is Haseem Rahman Jr. Rahman, Rahman, however, potato, tomato. Who is this guy? His dad was a heavyweight world champion and defeated Lennox Lewis. Ever heard of him? Lennox freaking Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. His dad was a boxer. So Haseem Rahman Jr. has been around this since he came out the womb. He has been breathing, eating, sleeping, boxing since he came out of the womb. This guy is a natural heavyweight. 
12 and 1, has won over 100 amateur fights. This guy has way more experience than Tommy Fury ever will have. So the whole moniker that Jake has been on lately, I want to fight a real boxer, it's what he's getting. But he's not fighting no bum. He is fighting a guy that can put your lights out. He's fighting a real legitimate boxer that has true aspirations of being a world champion. Whereas Jake just wants to win over your respect. He wants to be notarized for all the success that he has in the boxing ring. Now, another great thing I love about this fight is there's history. They sparred back in 2019, I believe. 2018, 2019, around there. These two sparred. And there's a video on Jake Paul's Instagram and a video on YouTube I'm sure you could find of these two jawing at each other. Of these two going back and forth, you know, just doing what having that competitive trash talk wasn't nothing personal. It was in the ring, good old fashioned trash talk. Hasim said he was taking it easy. Jake said he's getting, he got the better of a real boxer. Now, finally, we're here to settle this beef, to settle this dispute as to was Hasim going easy on Jake or is Jake just that good? But it is not a good fight for Jake. Jake should have just taken a fight against another MMA fighter or even a football player if he wanted to keep his name intact. This fight is completely the opposite of what a Jake Paul fan should want. I mean, even people in Jake's circle, in Jake's camp, were saying, don't do this, just postpone the fight, wait for Tommy, don't do this, don't do this. But here's where you got to respect him. And this is, I respect him because I'm this exact same person. Jake will fight anybody, anytime, anywhere, any weight. That's what he's doing here. He's got some balls on him. He could have waited for Tommy. He could have postponed the fight till November of this year. Instead, he's choosing the harder fight that no one thinks he could truly win, not even his own camp. With that, you can't just help but respect him. Like I said many times on this show, I love what he's doing for the sport. Boxing is dead. He is pumping new life into it. Even these celebrities are pumping new life into it. And with that being said, you just can't help but to respect Jake because of this move that he has. It's going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to watch it. It's definitely not the celebrity type boxing match that we were going to get with Tommy or anyone else. No one knows who Haseem Rahman Jr. is. We might know him after he possibly knocks out Jake Paul or Jake Paul would just land on the moon and have the whole world at his feet. Shall he not only win this fight, but knock out Haseem Rahman Jr.? So you have an opponent that is more than worthy and you have a history. You have a story. And at the end of the day, what sells a fight, what sells a pay-per-view is a great storyline. And that's what this is. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see what Jake can do. I'm excited to see what Haseem Rahman Jr. is because a casual boxing fan, the casual Jake Paul audience has no idea who this guy is. We are going to find out soon. And I think it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be very interesting. And maybe if Jake loses, we'll get back to the celebrity fights that we all know and love, that I know and love. So can't wait. August 6th. There you go. There you have it. It's going to be interesting. And yeah, man, <laughs> you got to have mad respect for Jake. I know I do, but I still think he's a little bit of a bitch. Hey, what's up, guys? You got to subscribe to AJ's YouTube channel and keep it 100. It's a good, some good content. Check it out, you guys.